that same year that I graduated from college and was on my way to play professional basketball uh, overseas, um, I became a victim of gun violence. Um, I was shot twice in my back uh, during the armed robbery, um, and those bullets uh, ended my basketball career. Um, I was having my last doctor's appointment um, to remove the bullets out of my back. Um, and I remember my doctor uh, started to tell me a story of a young man uh, from my community. Um, you know, this young man was 14 years old uh, when he became a victim uh, of gun violence and my doctor saved his life. And as a result of that shooting, this young man at the age of 14 years old lost sight in his left eye. And the more details that my doctor shared about this young man, uh, my heart just started beating faster and faster um, because I realized he was describing, um, you know, the young man that shot me. He was released from the hospital uh, just like I was, uh, released back into that same community without any support, any mental health services to help him heal um, and, and deal with the trauma that he was experiencing. So I, uh, I, I honestly believe that um, that young man's uh, unaddressed trauma uh, resulted in further victimization uh, with me being shot. And so the cycle of violence um, in communities um, rips apart communities. Uh, across the country and at Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice, we're working um, you know, to help change that. We started Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice because we were seeking to center the voices of victims of crime in criminal justice policy making discussions. Survivors of crime in communities hit hard by crime and incarceration did not express what often gets attributed to them which is they want more punishment, uh, long sentences, uh, and increased incarceration. In fact, survivors communicated to us that they want prevention, and they want healing, and they want investments in their communities to stop the root causes of crime. The, a voice on the other end of the phone told me that my daughter uh, had been murdered and that my grandson had been murdered. He was in uh, kindergarten. Initially, I froze. I, I just froze uh, when I was notified. And over time, I got to meet people that were engaged in restorative justice. It opened up for me an even bigger picture. We could make a difference. Mass incarceration doesn't work. It doesn't make us safer. It breeds more violence. We need to heal more than just the individuals and just the families, we need to heal communities. This, to me, is something that can happen. I don't think it's possible for us to talk about safe communities without talking about the health of the community. In 2013, uh, I lost my first cousin, James. Uh, he was shot and killed in San Francisco in January of 2017. I lost a second brother, uh, shot and killed in the same neighborhood that we grew up in. You know, there wasn't a lot of empathy for what was going on with my family because of the circumstances around his death. Um, we weren't really seen and treated as victims uh, because of his past history. Physical, mental, emotional health is critical. Um, if you look at communities that have lower rates of violence, you often see that they have a rich amount of resources that address mental health, uh, physical health, medical well-being. If we're not taking that approach to deal with violence, we're not going to effectively deal with violence. We're gonna keep treating the symptoms uh, that come with having a sick community. Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice um, has only been around for about seven years now. It has grown tremendously, and I think it's grown for several reasons. People are in pain. People do not feel like their voices have been heard by society, by the criminal justice system. People do not feel like their loved ones' lives have been respected and honored. And people have a lot to say about safety. And Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice, in many ways, have created an avenue, a pathway for folks to both elevate uh, their pain, but do it in a way that 
helps other people. And it's been invaluable to people to take their pain and turn it into power, to take the worst thing that's ever happened to them and turn it into a force for good. My name is Jamie Guerrero. I'm from California, and I'm here because of my sister, Kelly Guerrero. She was killed by her boyfriend in 2013. My name is Delia Sharp of Michigan, and I'm here representing my brother, Dean Samuel, who was murdered July 4th, 1996. Uh, my name is Calvin Brown from St. Petersburg, Florida. I joined this work on behalf of my nephews, Xander and Zayden Brown, that were murdered in 2012. My name's Kathy Taylor from Texas, and I'm here representing my son, Corey, who was murdered in 2013. My name is Megan Hobson. I'm from Florida. I do this on behalf of myself and my family as a survivor of gun violence. Our goal is to uh, advocate uh, for a justice system that to put the needs of survivors at the center, to stop the cycles of crime, and to advance a new safety solution that focuses on prevention, healing, rehabilitation, over more wasteful spending on incarceration. We have helped pass dozens of legislative and administrative reforms to increase access to trauma recovery services and eliminate barriers uh, to the Victims' Compensation Program. 